Good day, this is JNN Weekday News. I'm Unique Francis. Here now are our headlines. As government contemplates the decriminalization of ganja, some pro-weed advocates want the authorities to immediately end the practice of arresting people for having ganja and destroying ganja fields. These were among a number of concerns and questions raised at Sunday's preparatory meeting for the Ganja Future Growers and Producers Association GFGPA at the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica Auditorium on Trafalgar Road in Kingston. But Paul Burke, Programs Director for the association, while agreeing with the move for the enforcers not to prosecute individuals for a ganja, said he was not in support of the call for them to leave the ganja fields. He explained that the association at its official launch will be advocating for an end to the prosecution of individuals who are in possession of non-compressed ganja in the form of a declaration. Meanwhile, other pressing concerns were also raised at the meeting about the date and timeline of the decriminalization of ganja, the copyright and trademark of ganja, whether or not the Rastafarian community would benefit from the billions of dollars expected to be made from ganja when it is legalized, the amount of ganja that Rastafarians would be allowed to transport or use for sacramental purposes, as well as a call for adequate research to be done to guide the country as it moved toward utilizing ganja medicinally. Participants at the meeting accepted in principle the proposed objectives of the association. These are to represent the best interests of the various stakeholders give primacy of place to the traditional ganja cultivator for a specified period, lobby the Jamaican government for the establishment of a properly regulated cannabis industry in all aspects, cultivation, agro-processing, medicinal and its many and varied by-products and promote control, educate and taxation. Now, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller says not enough progress has been made to increase the number of women involved in parliamentary decision making since adult suffrage in 1944, arguing that the pace at which they are being integrated leaves much to be desired. In the 70 years since adult suffrage, only 35 of the 362 persons elected to parliament have been women. According to the Prime Minister, women's voices must be heard more and louder anywhere that public choices are being made that affect lives. Simpson Miller, who became Jamaica's first female Prime Minister in 2006, said the ascension of women to leadership positions around the world is being advanced by many to support the argument that women are making strides in politics, a motion for the temporary enactment of a quota system to boost the number of women in the parliament, which was brought by government Senator Aymani Duncan Price, has reignited the debate about women in politics. In entertainment news, director of the Grammy Museum Bob Santelli says Jamaica should make more investments in cultural tourism. In an interview with the Gleaner following a brief presentation at the Bob Marley Museum on Old Hope Road last Friday, the former journalist said Jamaica is armed with one of the most powerful products, but pointed out that there was not enough being done to market that product effectively. Santelli used the Bob Marley Museum as an example. He says the museum is a perfect example of how to attract not just tourists, but people who want to better understand how reggae has come about and what it means to the Jamaican people. And those were our headlines for today. Be sure to check out our website at jamaicanewsnetwork.com. I'm Unique Francis and this is JNN Newsworth Watching.